May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So a lot of us have been to church a number of times. And because we have a three-year cycle, a lot of us have heard the story of Zacchaeus a number of times. So I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going to preach on Zacchaeus today. Instead, I'm going to preach on Habakkuk. Because I think it actually is important. You see, it deals with, well, it starts to deal with one of the central questions for people of faith. What about all the bad stuff? And that's, it, it's a philosophical question, yes, and it's the way it's normally posed is, if God is omniscient, omnipotent, and benevolent, what about evil? That's the sort of the traditional posing of that question. And every answer to that question is called a theodicy, a defense of God. And it's not just a modern question. The, the parable of Job in the Bible is an attempt at a theodicy. And in this little section of Habakkuk, we've got the start of the same thing, a theodicy. And it's, it's set up as a, as a conversation between God and the prophet. And the prophet starts off and says, God, I stand on the city wall and I look out and there is violence and there is conflict and there is injustice and and the law is paralyzed. All it can do is punish people. It's not preventing these things. It's not good enough, God. What are you going to do about it? And the second part is God says, and we just get the start of the answer in today's reading, take notes. Write it clearly. Make sure it can be preserved for a long time. Because the answer needs to be understood over a long time. And there are very many different answers that people bring to the question. And they often come with sort of a, a story to help us understand them. One of the ones that I've heard quite frequently is the story of a tapestry. And if you look at a tapestry from the back, it looks like a mess. There's threads crossing over and there's bits cut off and it looks like a mess. But if you look at it from the front, it's a beautiful image. And so the idea is that we're looking at this perhaps from the wrong perspective. And if we look at the problems from God's perspective, it's not so much a problem. I don't know how I feel about that one. It's sometimes yes, sometimes no. And I suppose that's the first thing I need to say about theodicies. There is no perfect one. There are none that put a nail in the coffin of the question what about bad stuff happening? Another one I've heard is, um, is the metaphor of a surgeon. If I were to take a scalpel and to put a hole in someone, that would be bad. Because I'm not a surgeon. But if a surgeon does the same thing, they do so with the intention of causing, uh, of, a, of a good outcome. And healing. And growth. And so the idea is that sometimes the bad things we suffer are about helping us grow and build. One of the answers that's out there, and I do not like this one, um, is that God created the universe perfect, and then Adam and Eve went off and ate an apple. It wasn't an apple. They ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, destruction enters the world, and bad things happen. I don't like that because I think it's a bad reading of Genesis. It doesn't help us understand the nature of God. And it's not really an answer of what is God going to do in this particular situation. So I want to come back to the start of the answer that we get in Habakkuk. We see this phrase. It's the last phrase that's read. The righteous person will live by faithfulness. What does it mean to be righteous and to have faith in God? Well, to have faith in God means to be a part of God's family. 
So faith in God means to be part of God's family. And that means we need to look at how does God respond to evil. And the clearest picture, obviously, is the picture of Jesus. But there are others. And Jesus is God's theodicy. Jesus is God's response to the problem of pain and suffering. And so Jesus is born and is helpless and grows and learns and teaches and acts. And it's not all finished by the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. There are still problems in the world. We, we, you can watch the news. You can look around. But the way Jesus dealt with it was not to wave a magic wand and make all the bad things stop happening. Jesus is not magic. Jesus is gracious, as in full of the power and grace of God. And it's in the nature of God that when bad things happen, God is able to, to bring goodness out of them. Now that doesn't mean those bad things are suddenly good. They're not. <coughs> but it's in the nature of God to be transformative, to bring out of darkness light, to bring out of chaos order, to bring out of destruction hope, out of death comes life. <coughs> That's God's answer to the problem of bad things happening, to the problem of evil. But it's not a one-off answer. It's not a, this one time in history, Jesus, born, lived, died, rose again, problem solved. It's an ongoing answer. You see, part of the answer is currently <coughs> sitting in the pews at Good Shepherd in church. Because it's our responsibility to respond to the graciousness of God and the love of God in such a way as when we see evil or bad things, we respond to those. We need to speak out against it if we see it happening. We need to try and transform it. We need to try and be a force for God's will, God's love, God's graciousness. When we see someone hurt, we try and heal. When we see something wrong, we try and make it right. And it's not going to be a short-term answer. It's not going to be fixed in the next week. It's a long-term thing. Remember what God says to Habakkuk. Write this down. People are going to learn to understand it over a period of time. <coughs> 2,800 years. And although we look at the world and go, oh, it's terrible, there's so many things that are going wrong. The fact of the matter is, it's getting better. The world is a better place now than it was when Habakkuk was berating God. But it's an ongoing project. And we have a role to play in that project. We have a role to play. But we don't play it alone. It's not like you do it by yourself or I do it by myself. Not even that we do it by ourselves. The righteous person lives by his faithfulness. We, res we know we live our lives in relationship with God. So when we do these things, when we see and respond to these things, we do so knowing we do so in the love and presence of God. So the problem of evil is real. The problem of pain and suffering is real. And we are assured that part of God's answer is us. Not alone, but in the presence of God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.